Hello, everyone. We are here together in the name of Jesus Christ because, you know, our Father God in heaven has, is looking for them. They worship Him in spirit and in truth. That means the born-again Christian of the Holy Spirit, He will receive their worship as well as somebody worship Him in truth. That means, you know, all the hearts, confessing all the sins, you know, making heart, you know, pure before the Lord. Okay? Heavenly Father, we are here together in your name to worship our Father God. Because you know, we know that our Father is looking for us when we worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. We want to be ready to worship you and to be ready to receive your precious word of God of truth, Lord. Thank you, Father, in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let me read the book of Psalm, chapter 39, verse 1 through 13. I said I will take heed to my ways, that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. I was dumb with the silence. I held my peace even from good, and my sorrow was stirred. My heart was hot within me while I was musing the fire burned. Then spake I with my tongue, Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, which it is that I may know how frail I am. Behold, thou hast made my days as an hand breath, and mine age is as nothing before thee. Verily every man at his best state is altogether vanity, Sela. Surely every man walketh in a vain shoe, surely they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches and noise, now who shall gather them? And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Make me not the reproach of the foolish. I was dumb. I opened not my mouth because thou didst it. Remove thy stroke away from me. I am consumed by the blow of thine hand. When thou with rebukes doest the correct man for iniquity, thou makest his beauty to consume away like a moth. Surely every man is vanity seller. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears, for I am a stranger with thee and a sojourner as all my fathers were. O oh, spare me, that I may recover strength before I go hence and be no more. Amen. Yeah, let me read in a main scripture related to, to this sermon, a book of Amos. Book of Amos, chapter 8. Uh, verse 11 through 14. Behold, the days come, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and no the north, even to the east, 
They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. In that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. They that swear by the sin of Samaria, and say, Thy God would damn, David, and the manner of Yosheba liveth within, uh, even they shall fail and never rise up again. Yeah, you know, the Lord God talking about the days of famine is coming someday. It's prophecy. The Lord God will send the famine in the land in those days spoken through at the mouth of prophet Amos, as you heard. The famine is not the one of no bread and no waters, no starving man to death because of no rain at all. But it's a different kind of famine thirst. The spiritual famine and spiritual thirst shall be coming without hearing the words of Lord God. You are hearing now words of God. God had not spoken unto the Israelites for 400 years after spoken through the prophet Malachi because of their sins against God. Through the ancient prophets, Moses, the Lord God spoke unto them. He might make thee know that man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds out of mouth of the Lord does man live. How about you? Can you live without the words of God? You only need, you know, bread and water? Examine yourself whether you need the words of God, whether you are okay with that words of God. Is it okay, you know, you have a good report card at school, then without words of God, okay, you examine yourself, what kind of situation spiritually you are in. To make the children of Israel humble when they passing through the wilderness, God brought forth hunger unto them. He also fed them with a manner that their ancestors did not know when they cried out to God so that they might know that physical food is not enough to satisfy their souls and their spirit need the words of God. Yet they ate, you know, manna from heaven because in the wilderness nobody can sow the seed and harvest, you know, grain. The manna is a symbol of living bread coming in the future. Jesus said, I am the living bread. Your ancestors ate the manna, they died. But if you eat me, I am living bread, you shall not die. Lord God was manifested in flesh. He became a man in the name of Jesus before their eyes, after they had lived without the words of God for 400 years, their spiritual situation was so much miserable. The spiritual famine and thirst as a result of not hearing the words of God for 400 years were revealed unto their flesh as well as soul. Jesus had to spend all his days for healing them without rest. The Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes, such as Satan's servant, were ruling over the Jews to steal them physically and spiritually. Due to this, wherever Jesus went, they were filled with lepers, paralytics, blind people, all kind of different kind of disease, right? and man possessed by the devil.
because there had been no words for 400 years. But they did not know that the curse was come because they did not listen to the word of God. The purpose of the most of them came unto him only to cure, to cure their disease itself. Nevertheless, the Lord healed all their diseases because he is a merciful God. Meditating the days to come when man cannot hear the words of the Lord God, firstly, the servants of God don't have the words of God because God not speak unto them. Secondly, man cannot hear the words of God because they have not the ears to hear the voice of God. And God said to prophet Isaiah, Make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes, eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. Why? God asked the prophet Isaiah to do that. Because, you know, they worshipped idols. Now worship God. That's why they close their eyes and ears, you know, so that they may understand there was a God to live. Even this day, same thing. We have, we just, you know, try, uh, we satisfy our lust of flesh, lust of eyes and pride of life. Then we cannot hear the words of God. Even though many people, you know, preach the words of God these days, but impossible for them to understand that. God led them not to understand his word, making their eyes blinded and their ears heavy, because they not trusted in the Lord God, but rather worship the gods of the Gentilations. The Lord God had been in silence, not speaking unto them anymore for 400 years. Finally, the Lord God appeared unto them in the name of Jesus, becoming a man as the king of the Jews, and said unto them, but they were still worshiping the king of Roman Empire Caesar. They still couldn't understand the word of truth spoken by their king, Jesus, and ended up with crucifying him of the cross, rejecting him. Yet since Jesus died to take away the sin of the world and rose again the third day, and he returned to his seat at the right hand side of God in heaven, the Holy Ghost came to the world in the name of Jesus, and he has been speaking the words of God through his servant, not only unto the Jew, but also all nations of people for the last 2,000 years. Jesus spoke unto his disciples that the Holy Ghost shall prove, reprove the world. Reprove means rebuke the world. Because they are, they are wrong. That's why to correct them. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter, comforter means in the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. What that means, you know, the people in the world, you know, misunderstand what is sin, what is righteousness, what is judgment. I believe in Jesus Christ is sin because he took away the sin of the world already on his body. Only one sin is not believing him. Of righteousness, what? Only believe in Jesus Christ to be righteous, to go to heaven. And of judgment, what? The devil was judged, is judged on the cross when Jesus Christ died for our sins and rose again the third day. 
That means don't follow the devil. Don't follow the world. Follow me, Jesus. She said that. That's right. Although the Holy Ghost has been testifying of, his, of the sin because they are not believing in Jesus through his servants for the last 2,000 years, all the nation's people have been worshiping the God of the world, not understanding of their famine of not hearing the words of God. Lord Jesus met a woman in the city of a sea car in Samaria. He spoke unto her of the thing when the Holy Ghost is to come to build his church. Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor are yet at Jerusalem. Worship the Father. You worship, you know not what we know, what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But our coming, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Yet Jesus foretold unto the woman about the worship service of the church members of God to be built by Holy Ghost after he dies once to take away the sin of the world. Jesus spoke of them that worship the Father God. They are born again of the Holy Ghost through believing in, in him and receiving him. The Father God is looking for them that worship him with a true heart. And the true heart is holy one to love God with all the heart that loving the world and things within. The holy heart is to confess the sins, to keep the heart pure. That the Father is willing to receive the worship and truth. Ancient Israel priests washed their hands and feet in a basin that of the altar contained the water can go through the four doors and eat twelve bread anointed by the golden candlesticks in the holy place. The holy place, you know, you can see the picture of a holy place on the first page of bulletin then they are able to pray at the altar. And a high priest enter into the Mount high, most high place to hear the voice of the Lord God. Similarly, in this age, we hear the gospel of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ through the books of the four gospels in the scripture, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, right? And believe in the Lord Jesus Christ that died shedding the blood at Calvary, that is the altar to be born again of the Spirit unto salvation. And henceforth, as a priest of God, we have to preach the gospel of Christ of his eternal redemption through his death only one time on the cross. Even though we are saved by the blood of Christ, purifying our conscience, we are still to confess our sins to be cleansed by the blood of Christ, as well as waters flowing out of the words of God, as ancient priests washed their hands and feet with waters. Apostle Paul testified of cleansing with waters unto the saints of Ephesian church, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. You know, if you take a look, you know, the bulletin for pay, you see the holy place, right? It's a place of worship. You know, first, uh, first uh, golden candlestick is a symbol of a holy ghost. And uh, table of shoe bread, you know, 12 breads, okay? Six, you know, two row in six, right? That means, you know, the words of God is 66 books, right? Yeah, under the light of candlestick, 
somebody eat, you know, they ate, you know, the, 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 the bread, right? And altar of incense is the, the place to prayer, to enter the most high place, you know, to hear the voice of God. Unless we worship, worship God in the holy place spiritually, we cannot hear the words of God. We cannot eat the words of God without, you know, anointment Holy Spirit. And also impossible for us to pray, to please God, to enter the most high place in heaven spiritually. See, it is, you know, kind of holy place uh, in old times, you know, tabernacle, it is kind of, you know, symbol of three, Holy Ghost and was of God and prayer. And the reason Father God looking for them that worship Him in spirit and in truth means we have to confess all our sins to enter the holy place, you know, spiritually under the anointment Holy Spirit, then we can hear the words of God. You understand what I'm saying? Words of God? If so, you are in holy place. If not, you are not holy place. You are the court of, you know, the tabernacle still. Cannot enter the holy place. Okay. Do you pray every day? If we pray, you are already in holy place. If not, you're still not within the holy place. Yeah, very important message, okay? To worship the Father God in spirit and in truth, we have to enter into spiritual holy place and receive the light of the Holy Ghost to understand the 66 books of the words of God through the anointment of the Spirit that were 12 breaths in the holy place. Then we can pray unto God as a priest. As priest went forward the altar. Since the veil between the holy place and most high place was torn in to two pieces through the de through the death of Christ Jesus. We are able to enter into the most high place in heaven. In old days, only the high priest could enter most high place. We can enter the most high place in heaven, where the Lord Jesus Christ is our, our high place spiritually. Pastor Paul wrote a letter unto the Ephesians such a great blessing for us. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, when we believe in Him, right? Thy, by grace you are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Where are you sitting spiritually? Your body is sitting in the chair right now in, in the earth. What about your spirit? Where, where your spirit is sitting? Are you sitting at the right hand side of God? Then you can see the glory of God. You can see, you know, Father God. You can worship Father God in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. That in the age to come he might show the exceeding riches of Jesus Christ in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. That the Lord God spoke through prophet Amos, and they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. In that day, shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. What that means? If our body needs balanced nutrition to be sound body, we have to receive the spiritual nutrition in the words of God that are for doctrines and for reproof and for correction and for instruction in righteousness. You know, physical nutrition, right? Protein, fat, and other you know, kind of nutrition, right? We, we have to take all those things, you know, in the balance, right? Same thing, even in the words of God. 
Some, some words of God just milk. Some words of God just meat. Some are just, you know, vitamin. Some are just like, you know, fruits. Many different kinds of words of God. To make our spirit sound, to make our soul sound, we have to take all these words in the 66 books of the words of God. How much you have taken, receiving spiritual food? Are you balanced? Or are you malnutrition? We have to examine ourselves. Yeah, we have to take, you know, all kind of words of God, you know, doctrine, reproof, you know, correction and instruction and righteousness to be filled with the Holy Ghost without spiritual famine as well as spiritual thirst. People in this age hang around eager to work to feed the lust of flesh, to live with them while trying to get the satisfaction wandering from north to east and from sea to sea to try to live accumulating all riches. Even those who worship every week God to God only steps on the court of the temple so that they cannot enter into the holy place so that they cannot hear the words of God, even hearing it sitting at the pew. We can see the present situation of the churches in the end time, in the words of God spoken unto the church of Laodiceans. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in fire, and thou mayst be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayst be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye self, that thou mayst see. What? What kind of message given to Church of Laodicea? That is, you know, a situation of the churches in end time. They always try to have prosperity financially instead of spiritual strength, spiritual blessing. Yes. All times, you know, people of Israel always pay attention to worship the idols, you know, to receive kind of the materials from the devil, from their gods of, you know, gentle nations. Not receiving the words of God. Same thing. Even though they are naked, they are miserable, wretched, and blind, poor, but they thought we are rich. Same things, you know, going on in these days in the churches of God. Even though they come to church, hear the sermon, as you are doing, you, as you are hearing right now, spiritually they cannot enter the holy place, never confess they are idolatry, con conspicuous, you know, that means what? Rather than God, but they worship the, you know, material mammon. They cannot enter the high place, holy place. They, even though they hear the words of God, they can understand. There's no way for them to ripen. You know, so even though physically we are here, you should be able to enter the holy place in the presence of the Holy Spirit, then you understand there was a God and you can pray. What is a pray? Pray is to make the will of God done, not our will. That's a prayer. All right, so I bless all of you who are able to worship God in spirit and truth to hear the words of God, to receive the spiritual food in balance. 
as you take, you know, physical nutrition every day. Not only physically, but also spiritually, I bless all of you to be sound. Even people, you know, in the world say, sound mind, in sound body. Right? Yes. When your soul is sound, then your spirit is sound. All right? Then your body also could be healthy, sound, you know, strengthened by the Holy Spirit through His words. Father, we heard your message today. We want to answer you upon hearing your message, Lord. Now we examine ourselves, where we are. Still we are in the world, or we are in holy place to communicate with you, our Father, to worship you. I bless all of them to be in balance spiritually, to make their soul, spirit, sound so that they may be able to worship you and serve you, Lord. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, amen.